That also applies to you if you are changing your gearing on your road motorcycle to be cheap so that you can get more miles to the gallon because you're changing your gearing specifically to bring the RPMs down. Please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Now while we've got the Ninja 400 completely apart for our T-Rex part upgrade, question we got on YouTube, what's wheelbase? What do I need to know? Why do I need to know it? Well, wheelbase is essentially going from center of the axle to center of the axle. That's your wheelbase. So in this case, we measured it out at 54 centimeters. No. 54 inches. No. <laughs> That's true. At 54 inches. But that's the, the wheelbase. So basically, we can go from center of the tire and contact patch to center of the tire and contact patch. Well, you can do axle to axle, it doesn't matter. The second piece of that is swing arm center down to center of your rear axle. That's another really important data point, and that's 21 inches. So 54 and 21. 21 inches being 535 millimeters. This is technically more important than the entire wheelbase, but the longer the bike, the more stable it is. The shorter the bike, the more nimble it is. So if you're curious and you've got a couple bikes in your stable, go measure, let's say, a light, ADV bike, like a DRZ 400, something like that, or a Honda CBR 500, and look at your wheelbase, but then also look at your swing arm length from center of the pivot to center of the axle, and get a couple of measurements there. There are some very interesting facts about that. So let's move the data we just collated from the Ninja 400 and put it on the board. <clears throat> Excuse the diagram, I'm not an artist. This component with your swing arm length is in most modern bikes an increasingly longer measurement. If we put, let's say my 2017 RSV4 RF, then that's gonna be 22 inches, which is 560 mm. So it's longer by an appreciable amount but it also has 180 horsepower versus 40. So there's a connection there between swing arm length and power and stability. Shorter distance on a smaller horsepower bike <clears throat> also reflects in the way the swing arm's made. Box section steel for our Ninja 400 versus cast aluminum swing arm or aluminium to please the English English that handles a lot more horsepower and all has structural rigidity and flex built into it at the same time. A lot of people will go, okay, I need to adjust my chain and I need to move the wheel back. Now, in some cases, that's just a natural process of the chain wearing out, the wheel going further back. So the longer you make your wheelbase, the lazier the motorcycle becomes as the chassis gets longer and longer and longer. Many uh, people will refer to sport touring bikes as land yachts because they take a country mile to turn versus a Ninja 400 can stop, turn around and disappear the other way. Not instantly, but extremely quickly by comparison. So when you're adjusting your chain, you're actually bringing your wheel further and further back. Sometimes there's a limit, obviously, and then the chain gets replaced because you cannot bring the rear wheel any further back. And then other times, well, if you change your gearing, because you're gonna to go to the track, so you change your gearing and you put a bigger sprocket on the back, then that brings the wheel forward. And if you bring the rear wheel forward, then you're gonna get an even more agile bike. So the position of the axle in the swing arm is a very cr critical factor that you need to be aware of. Rule of thumb, generally in the middle, is always a good place to be. If you're building something for the track, then you're looking at something that needs to be both agile, but geared correctly. For that, you may need to go way beyond a stock chain and do something considerably different.
The other part to think about is with a lo low horsepower bike, a short wheelbase is fine because you can't put enough leverage through the swing arm and the shock working together to create an issue. That issue is that you never want your swing arm to go from that angle, check this pen, Ideally, with the bike at rest, that angle needs to be somewhere between eight to nine degrees. Then you're roughly in the sweet spot, but when you ride, what you do not want is an act, your swing arm rotating up to go flat. That generally doesn't work at all. If you're gonna assess where you're at, that's fine. Take a look at where you're at. Most people will do the bike at rest because it's easier. Others will do it with the suspension completely unloaded and the tires just, just touching the ground. And then that for the swing arm angle actually gets to be anywhere between 11 to 13 degrees. A lot less equipment needed here. But one of the no-nos is that that swing arm can't go flat. The other one that's even worse is if your swing arm travels that direction that's called squat and anti-squat on the chain and the rear sprocket, that it actually wants to pull the wheel under or forward of the bike. And then having seen that a couple times at national races where riders didn't really have the time, they wanted to change the gearing. I think it was the Buell at the time. Um, and that was pretty painful to watch because the rear wheel's trying to get under the bike and it won't handle at all at that point. So some of the consequences are based on what's your swing arm angle, is it too great or is it too flat? And then of course, your total wheelbase length. Going out to a 1000cc bike, well, it's not unusual to see 22 and a half, maybe even 23 inches to see 580, 585 with the wheel all the way back. What that does is help with wheelie. So we were changing the chain angle and chain pull for squat and anti-squat to make the thousand sit. And generally, a lot of riders will take a thousand cc and pull the rear wheel into the final third to help fight wheeling. Very common behavioral trait based on data seen. And if you look at a lot of the race series, you'll find even though those swing arms are custom made, the rear wheel isn't all the way forward. It's mostly all the way back. So the handling issues you can get, obviously if you've got a short wheelbase with a ton of horsepower, you can spend all day at 11 o'clock. Great if you want to show off, but miserable if you want to ride. Because every time you put, touch the power, it's going to lift the front wheel. Bear in mind what you have. Take a look at what your wheelbase is. What is your actual swing arm measurement? What is your swing arm angle? Are you in the ballpark? And if you're gonna change to do something like track work and you're moving the axle forwards or backwards, then you need to understand the repercussions of that with your swing arm. And last piece, if your swing arm is short, say it's 550, but then you go 575, think of that as a breaker bar for leverage. Short bar, not a whole lot of leverage. Much longer bar, way more leverage. So if you do choose to go much longer in the chassis, that's gonna make it really stable, hard to turn. But the other part is here with that much distance, there's a lot more leverage on the shock. So you may have to go much stronger on spring initially and maybe even valving because you've got more leverage. If you're shortening up the wheelbase for a tight technical track for more agility, maybe you have to go for a softer spring. And in going for a softer spring, then that reflects the amount of leverage you've got. So bear in mind, fast, really fast tracks you're gonna go longer for more stability and work harder turning. Tight technical tracks, you'll go shorter on your swing arm pivot to axle for more agility, but you'll have to drop the spring rate down. Get a tape measure out, get some data points on your bike, see what you've got. Doesn't hurt to have some knowledge and then apply that knowledge, especially if you're gonna do gearing changes, 
because you're going to the track but that also applies to you if you are changing your gearing on your road motorcycle to be cheap so that you can get more miles to the gallon because you're changing your gearing specifically to bring the RPMs down. When you do that, did you change the chain or did you change the wheelbase? And generally, if you're going for RPMs being lower, the front and the rear sprockets tend to be bigger on the front, smaller on the rear, and that shortens your wheelbase. So bear in mind, if you're making changes, have a cup of tea and a, a sandwich first and get a napkin out and doodle some notes and try and figure out what you're trying to achieve and how things are gonna change for you and your motorcycle. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.